Welcome one and all to another episode, another week here at the Damage Report with me, John Arola and Francesca Fiorentini. Francesca, how's it going? Ooh, happy Monday, everybody rise and effing shine. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm <laughs> mostly risen, mostly shining. How was Sunday though? We'll get on to the Monday stuff, but how was the habituation room? Sunday sucked, oh, I'm just kidding, cuz I was working on the show the whole time. But it, no, it was, a, it was a very good show, we talked about crypto. Uh, sorry, uh, three women talking about cryptocurrency. Oopsies, you're welcome. Uh, Molly White, who tracks all the sort of like debacles in Web3, which is NFT crypto, she broke it down for us. It was great and really interesting. So, yes, get and listen to the Bituation Room wherever mm. you do the things for your eyes and ears. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Yeah, I saw some commercial and it was like, it was like a tweet of someone saying, crypto's dead. Uh -huh. And then they go back like three years earlier and someone's like, crypto's dead. And then three years earlier, and it was just like, don't worry about the fact that the market completely crashes every couple of years. Be bold. And I was like, I get what you're <laughs> saying. In the long run, I suppose it has bounced back. It's still devastating people. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's these these systems that are totally insulated from any. Like from anybody learning based on the evidence of what actually happens. Like I, I just yes. I don't trust those sorts of things. I'll include the the, the actual stock market in that same thing. But no, it's it's anyway, it, yeah. but is the regular financial system only worse? So like all the promises mm -hmm. of it being better. No, no, it's only worse in it's most more ways. easily exploitative. Yeah, the yeah. actor Seth Green just got like four NFTs stolen from him because he answered a phishing email. Like he just lost a bunch of digital art. It's just very funny. Where's apes at? Anyway, okay. Well, we actually are not going to be talking about crypto today for the first time in quite a while. We are going to be talking about a lot of things, though, including uh, disease. That's fun. Uh, what made Donald Trump want to quit the 2016 election? Uh, we've got just a, a lot of madness is what we've got. They're new, new frontiers of book banning that we're going to be talking about. Uh, horrible police violence and Bill Maher, he's <laughs> getting worse. <laughs> if you didn't think that was possible, I think it is. Anyway, we're gonna get to all that and more through the course of the show. So uh, in advance of that, if you're on a platform that allows for things like liking this stream that you're watching right now, wouldn't that be a treat? Do that and you can share it and all that so that people get the notifications. And along the way, if you wanna send us comments, tweets, super chats or anything like that, that would be great. But with all that said, Francesca, you ready to do this thing? Yes. Okay, heads up to the director. I realize that in the thing it says it's going to be a cold open, but now I'm realizing that it's not. So I'm going to introduce it, okay? A lot of crazy stuff happening over the weekend, a lot to be scared about, and we're going to profile it in today's Monday Menace. <laughs> We're already dealing with one global pandemic, and you said yesterday that monkeypox is something that everyone should be concerned about. There are a few confirmed cases in the U.S., and some countries are imposing 21-day quarantines for people who are infected or even in some cases just exposed. Should Americans expect something similar? Okay, we're gonna get to what Biden has to say about the monkeypox, but I understand a lot of people are worried about it. We're not even out of this pandemic, and now you're seeing these terrifying photos of people in a number of different countries getting monkeypox, and and then you see that New York City has their first case of monkeypox, and that brings to mind, you know, the beginning of the COVID pandemic. New York City obviously got really hit hard, so New York City has a case. Uh, Massachusetts had the nation's first case of monkeypox back on uh, Wednesday. And we can go to this little Nash, uh, international map. You're gonna see uh, different countries around the world that have it. Um, you can see there Spain, Portugal, the UK. I mean, these are still, these are just a couple of dozen cases outside of uh, Africa. There's 92 uh, outside of Africa, but that, that is scaring people that it's spreading to countries like Australia, Canada, Belgium, Italy, London, Northern Ireland, Portugal, uh, and Spain. Now that does not mean though, that this is COVID once again, or that you need to be terrified. Um, but just in case, we are going to dive into what it actually is, the different ways that it can manifest, and all that. Francesca, before we get into the specifics, how how terrified are you right now? Um, you know, 
I I know it's sexually transmitted, and I'd like to say, you know, I'm on the prowl, I'm dating around, I'm swiping right, you know, all that stuff. I'm living my, you know, whatever, early 20s. I'm not, and uh, I'm monogamous, sorry. So uh, I feel safe, uh, I feel safer about that. Um, mm-hmm. But I also kind of have to admit that like, I'm old by saying that I feel safe. Okay, that's good. Well, we are glad that you are a safe <laughs> and old and monkeypox free. Um, but it has been spreading. It's been spreading inside of Africa for a few years now. Um, mainly just in there, actually. It reemerged in Nigeria in 2017. There had been 40 years with no reported cases. Imagine that going, imagine that going literally 40 years, and then at the end of that 40 years, we decide to backtrack as a society. How could we ever let that happen? But it is happening <laughs> with monkeypox here. Now, it can be transmitted by droplets and by close contact with infected skin lesions or contaminated materials. Usually incubates in people for six to 13 days before symptoms appear. So this is one of several viruses that can spread uh, thanks to infected skin lesions. I would just say as a general rule, don't touch people's skin lesions as a general thing. And there's just the the benefits aren't worth the cost. But if you call them your skin lesions. Exactly. That that's a, that's cooler, a pickup line. Hey, you want to touch my skin lesions? I don't. I don't think anyone wants. Can I buy to, you um, a drink? Just covered in monkeypox. <laughs> no. Anyway, um, as Francesca alluded to, high risk contacts include sex, uh, sexual partners, people who live in the same house, or anyone who comes into contact with uh, bodily fluids, for example, via a cough or sneeze. So. That is one thing to bear in mind, that it is going to be more difficult for this to easily spread because it requires the actual like droplets. It's not, in my non-expert version, it is non-aerosolized. So it's a little bit like how um, you know things like uh, Ebola and stuff is more deadly, but also more difficult for it to actually spread. So again, that's one reason to pump the brakes. There's a few reasons though to pump the brakes. Now, if you get it, it creates a rash that starts with flat red marks that become raised and filled with pus. So, you know, ew. Infected people also have a fever and body aches. And in terms of how deadly it is, there are actually two different versions of it, at least. Um, the one that seems to be spreading internationally appears to be the one that is far less deadly, with a, a case fatality rate of, I believe, about 1%. The other one, depending on what source you look at says that it's three or six or 10%. So significant mm-hmm. difference in terms of fatality rate between the two. Um, but as we said, symptoms can take one to two weeks to actually come as long as three in some cases. They can last for two to four weeks. Um, and uh, at least in the UK, they're saying that if you believe you've been exposed or if you have it, you should quarantine for at least three weeks. But again, the chance that you have this is incredibly low at this point. I just want to say that uh, the reason that a lot of these older viruses are coming back, and the reason that there's so many, essentially, I mean, it's called monkeypox. This is like wild animal stuff, and you're like, who's touching monkeys? You know, the age-old question. Um, and the reality is nobody. However, as humans continue to degrade the environment and gentrify the jungle, we mm-hmm. come into closer contact with wild animals. As we continue to, you know, obliterate the Amazon for things like uh, factory farming or what you know, monoculture and monocrops, that leads to less biodiversity. There is less protection between us and wild animal monkey diseases. So, like this. This is all kind of part of what Mother Nature has been and will continue to be trying to tell us, which is leave me the f alone. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Otherwise, yeah. I kill. I kill. You know? I kill with okay. lesions. Actually, uh, yes. Now, as of right now, CDC says there is no safe, proven treatment for monkeypox, but the FDA says that smallpox vaccines, which seem to be quite effective in preventing it, uh, antiviral treatments as well. Those will be used to stop the the spread of this. So that is a great like think like think about how lucky we are that this thing is reemerging once again, and we already apparently have a vaccine that will stop it. Oh. Unfortunately, we have a population <laughs> that is not remotely interested in vaccines oh. and probably won't take it in the first place. But They're anyway, be pro smallpox in no time. Exactly. Like I I my hope is that like for for people who. They were willing to be a part of the solution socially for about 
three days and then they gave up and they were willing to get COVID. The fact that it only got you really sick and killed you wasn't enough to get through to these people. But once you start seeing the lesions and the, the pus filled blisters, yes. I feel like that'll get through to some people even if they're worried about Bill Gates. I don't think anybody wants pus filled blisters. What do you I think? think that's, that's a really good end point. We humans are basic AF, especially Americans. And the ill factor is a pretty big factor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll that'll get through to you. Now, uh, Biden has been trying to reassure people that you don't necessarily have to forget about this saying, I just don't think it rises to the level of the kind of concern that existed with COVID-19 and the smallpox vaccine works for it. He said he believes the US has a sufficient supply of smallpox vaccine to quote, deal with the likelihood of the problem. And studies have shown that that particular vaccine is at least 85% effective against monkeypox, which is again, harder to spread. So. There's a couple of different things working in the direction of this not being as big of an issue. Uh, that said, we wanted to get out in front of some of the misinformation. We're gonna turn to misinformation in a bit, but I have no doubt that soon people will be making videos about what bizarre thing you should be buying from them to not get monkeypox. And we're about to enter into a time of an incredible amount of uh, misinformation. And also all those people will be saying that Biden and the Democrats are trying to use this thing to win the elections when he is literally like doing these international press conferences saying, you don't have to worry, we've got the vaccine. Like, so it's about to get real dumb up in here, Francesca. That's mm -hmm. my prediction. Yep. And with that, then why don't we turn to a little bit of the dumb? Let's jump into this video. Gates, why is Bill Gates? running everything. Why does he get to decide that? You know, Bill Gates, I want to remind everyone, he wants to grow fake meat in a Petri dish and he wants us to drink poop water. So I don't know why we're letting Bill Gates decide our health decisions. But here's the deal. Uh, Bill Gates is very concerned about monkeypox because this is something apparently he can make a lot of money off of and him and his other buddies. Okay, so something, something, Bill Gates. We were always going to get there with monkeypox. You can't have an international virus scare without some billionaire being involved in it. And look, Bill Gates does want to make money. I don't know, maybe he'll find some way, but they got into this really fast with the Bill Gates and the poop water, I guess. There's something, I don't go on those forums, so I don't get the poop water thing. But she does have more of this theory, and we want to show it to you. So take a look at this. That is disgusting and it is terrifying. Nasty, horrible, big bubbles of pus on your skin. I mean, clearly nobody wants this. So they're gonna have pictures of all of these kind of terrifying images. They're gonna show children with this all over their faces. And of course they're gonna be from, I don't know where they're gonna be from. And then they're gonna tell you, you have to wear a mask from because if you get close to anyone's face and they spit on you, you're gonna contract this horrible, terrifying disease, monkey pox. But don't worry, you gotta go ahead. I know you have a Dr. Fauci pillow that you sleep with every night. We need to order your Bill Gates pillow. You gotta have, you should have a body pillow of Bill Gates and you can cuddle with it every night because Bill Gates is gonna save the day. I just wanna remind everyone in case you've forgotten that she is still technically a Congresswoman. Like she obviously just wants to do a right wing podcast. I mean, that that's what they all want to do. That's why Madison Cawthorn, Ted Cruz has got his little podcast. They don't want to actually legislate. They just want to do this thing. But she's talking about like the, the pus and the pillows and trying to give her audience what they want. But she's supposed to be a congresswoman, Francesca. And here yes. she is trying to scare people preemptively into, I don't know, being terrified of monkeypox on the one hand. And also trying to make you believe that it's nothing to worry about. Like simultaneously, I it doesn't have anything to do with Bill Gates. He didn't make monkeypox. It's been around before Bill Gates existed. I look, first of all, Marjorie Taylor Greene is the pus filled boil of Congress. So she understands this disease better than anyone. Um, but I love the future that we're staring down of like. Hell yeah, get monkey pox to own the libs, you yes. know, be an unapproachable, smelly, nasty, like, like just, you know, pus filled, ridden MAGA stan to own the libs. 
we're owned, man. Do yeah. it. I don't care. Like throw your little monkey pox parties where you like get a chimpanzee drunk and then you all try to get it, you know, <laughs> uh, in whatever ways we won't ask about. But like that's where we're headed. It's any amount and and again, it is funny, but it's also really sad because it has a lot to do with the fact that the healthcare system in this country is so inaccessible and so so opaque to so many people because they don't have their doctor that they see regularly or they they yeah. are taught and always avoid the doctor. And while while that's usually been for monetary reasons, now I think in this day and age, in a day of pandemics and vaccines and and misinformation, it's all about like, well, I don't know what what they do anyway. I don't even know yeah. what medicine is. What about my supplement, right? So it's it's conflated, and totally. we are the perfect rubes in this country for this kind of medical misinformation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like we we focused on you know them attacking the the CDC and the WHO on, in terms of these pandemics, but when you convince a solid third of the country, if not half, that you should not trust medical professionals. That is gonna have consequences across everything. And we won't always know, but it's coming. Um, I love the little, the weird projection about pillows. Like we're <laughs> yeah. not the ones who have a guy who's like a weird pillow man. That You guys like the political pillows. And Marjorie Green, I literally watched you grope cardboard Trump's crotch on stage. Like if we're talking about like like holy icons or whatever, yeah. like you're the one who's worshiping these graven images. But anyway, here's the thing. Marjorie Green's crazy. She ain't the only one. She is projecting out there to an audience that already believes a lot of these conspiracy theories. And we wanted to let you know about a few of the ones that are already spreading when it comes to monkeypox. So First of all, that it's a hoax, just in general. Um, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It's it's a virus, like it it's there now. It's been around before. It spread the U.S. By the way, back in 2003, had an outbreak of monkeypox. Came about apparently from prairie dogs. Did they make it up then too? So I don't know what that's supposed to mean. That the government is deliberately stoking fears about it. The government is literally trying to reassure people that this is not a serious thing. It's not the same as COVID. So again, they like the idea that the government is trying to terrify you and they're not interested in whether there's any evidence that that's actually happening. Um, that it's the new COVID-19, I don't know what that's supposed to mean specifically. It's it's scary, I guess, if you see the pictures, but there are some significant differences between COVID and monkeypox, so bear that in mind. That it is linked to COVID vaccines. So there's these maps going around showing the countries where uh, it is starting to spread and they're saying, well, these are the places that have vaccines. Or so one version of it is, well, it's spreading in only NATO countries. Isn't that weird? Well, it's not <laughs> true, like it's literally developed. Amazing. It's been for years in, in Africa. They're generally not big on NATO. Anyway, it's just there's a lot of nonsense going on out there that that it's just shingles, that all the pictures are fake. That it's just a different disease that they're trying to pretend now. Sh shingles is serious. contagious as hell, man, shingles is serious. Yeah, but shingles is just herpes and herpes is just, I don't know. That's they're a, just, they're, there's a lot of misinformation. You're gonna, you're gonna, so if you're in the audience, you might come across some of this, but more, more likely when you hang out with your family, I need you to be ready for some absolute madness when it comes to monkeypox talk. Yeah, and I think the last thing I'm gonna say is that if we had a more robust public health system in this country and more funding, um, that we would not be relying on any kind of billionaire money. And there is no link at this point between Gates and monkeypox. But again, he is <laughs> invested in this in absolutely he's been in behind some of the COVID-19 vaccines and he is interested and invested in like global health, etc. And like mm -hmm. innovation on that level. But Again, this is why we need to tax people like Bill Gates. So we can actually do some of that development ourselves, you know, as you know, government funded projects, which in part was how we even got a ramp up of the COVID-19 vaccine in the first place that yeah. their dear darling Donald Trump absolutely helped. So thank you. Exactly. Thanks, DJ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we want to like they think that I guess that Bill Gates is a lefty and like and we love look we want to raise his taxes. I want to I want him to have a wealth tax like way bigger than even the ones that have been proposed. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, a lot of this doesn't. 
we didn't want to show you any more of that video than we actually had to of Marjorie Green. But in it, she says that the person in New York who appears to have gotten, or maybe she's talking about Massachusetts, appears to have gotten it from Canada, which apparently is true. And then she uses that as like an opportunity to make a really like shallow, like anti Trudeau comment. But like, okay, so your point is that Trudeau is really bad, really ineffective. That's how monkeypox has been able to spread. So. The government has a responsibility to stop these sorts of things and they're doing a bad job. And then she immediately trans transfers over to, and they're gonna try to have you wear masks. So, so again, it's the government's responsibility. They've failed, that's why viruses are here, but you shouldn't do literally anything to stop it from spreading. Right. And, and me pointing this out is pointless because of course, this has been their approach to the pandemic for nearly two years. And somehow it makes sense to their base. That Biden has allowed COVID to spread, that's bad, thus, thus Biden is bad, but you shouldn't let Biden do anything to stop it from spreading. And they believe those things simultaneously. They maintain yep. amidst all of this suffering and death, those two directly contradictory positions. Yep. Anyway, Oh, also by the way, if we could jump ahead of the last graphic here, I, uh, this is not gonna surprise anyone in terms of the conspiracy theories and all that online. Um, but people are like in their reporting on this in the social media activity are implying that this is only a virus that affects gay people or something. Oh so you shouldn't worry about it. That's not that's not true. Like it, first of all, even if it was, it would be serious. So we should take it seriously. But it isn't true. That's another one of the bits of misinformation that's floating around. So um, it is our Monday minutes because people are worried. You should not be as scared of as you are of COVID, which is still killing more than 300 people a day reported in the US. So bear that in mind, those are the facts as we have them right now. As things develop, we will talk more about it. And by the way, I was making a joke about shingles actually being these other things. That was not serious, I'm not saying those things are real. Let's be clear about that. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. 10 no, cents, 10 years, I don't what? know, that I don't know. That is uh, Donald Trump back during the 2016 election. The last good thing Chris Matthews ever did was getting Trump to be honest as a Republican on the record to say, yeah, if women get abortions, I think they should be punished. Should it be six years? Should it be 10 years? I don't know, we'll have a debate about how many years women should be thrown in prison for getting an abortion. So. We bring that back, that little throwback to remind you that he is horrible on this issue. Um, he's also apparently worried that it could hurt him in the near future because he's still really bad. And with Roe v. Wade potentially being overturned as a result of the Supreme Court justices he put on the court, he's worried that it might hurt him. He's apparently been telling his allies that uh, it could hurt his chance of winning reelection if he does run again in 2024. Rolling Stone reported that Trump has been telling allies that the issue of abortion could turn quote suburban women against him quote. He is worried women in the suburbs could punish him for this one day. Suburban women, some who voted for me, they don't like it when we talk about it. Trump apparently told a small gathering. Mm. Um, the fact that he is seeing these political developments and can project forward to the future the idea that women might feel betrayed, I think is the most like the most like conscious, like poor thinking I've ever seen from Donald Trump. Um, yeah, they might not like you as a result of this, and that would make all the sense in the world. Yes. That is exactly how this should play out. And that's what we've been talking about, I think, for weeks now, how this is not a victory lap for the right. Um, even though Trump has been the Trojan horse uh, for making the Supreme Court the way it is and for configuring it to be this you know, Machiavellian plan against Roe v. Wade that has finally come to fruition. And yet, even he knows that it's not popular. Um, and it's crazy to hear him say that because, you know, very little trickles through that sort of thick breakfast buffet brain that he has, right? Like, imagine this one little, like, droplet of wisdom. Suburban women don't like it when I say there should be punishment if you terminate a pregnancy. Hey, six out of 10 people who have an abortion are already parents, you dumb yeah. pieces of S. Like, Careful. So, right, I yes, am. This is for sausage of the breakfast variety. Absolutely. 
so I think that's interesting. I also like I, I my heart breaks a little bit looking back on Chris Matthews, not because I miss him, but because it reminds me of the ways that Trump was allowed to and actually egged on in a lot of his very outlandish statements. You think there should be punishment for women who have an abortion? How much? Ten years? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you throwing that out? In what world? <laughs> that is weird. Like, John, if you had the opportunity to inter- interview Donald Trump and you asked him that question, would Wouldn't you stop at like yet however many women every single year have abortions, you still think they should be punished? What would that mean legally versus like, oh, hey, 30 years, 10 years, you you tell me. That's how we got into this whole wall mess. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, the, the fact that he asked it did, Trump did say, I don't know. I mean, that provides a little bit of information about how extreme he wants the punishment to be. I agree that like giving ideas to the proto fascist wannabe <laughs> dictator might not yeah. be the best idea ever. But yeah, hey, look, I, I wanna catch up on a little bit because I, I wanna get into, I have some thoughts about consistency on the right on this issue that I think we really need to grapple with. But first, Trump so far following the leak on May 3rd that Roe v Wade might be going away, he hasn't really talked about it. He hasn't talked about it on Truth Social. He only once sort of alluded to it during a rally. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it, this is an intentional thing that he's not talking about it. He's not, again, reminder, he is not talking about the justices he chose to destroy Roe v. Wade, about being about to destroy Roe v. Wade. You would think you would be excited, thrilled that the thing you said you wanted to happen is now happening, but he's not. By the way, back in 1999, he declared, I'm very pro choice. Now, in practice, the fact that he is a massive flip flopper hypocrite on this, the fact that he's lying about being religiously pro life or whatever is sort of irrelevant. If he puts people on the court, they're gonna kill it. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, it should bother the right more, but they're getting what they want. And I wanna read this, Ted Cruz in response um, in response to this coming out when he said the thing with Chris Matthews, because all the other Republicans that run against him, they had to comment on it. So his chairman said on CNN that Cruz quote, shares the views of the pro-life movement, which for years has focused on punishing those who perform the abortions, not the women who get them. Okay, so Trump is wrong. We shouldn't be punishing them. We should be throwing the doctors in prison or whatever. So at the risk, Francesca, of giving the the, you know, the proto-fascist wannabe dictator ideas, um, that's BS. Like so much of this is. If you think that it's murder, why wouldn't you punish the woman? If you believe that they're committing a murder, like you, like the woman went there, right? She set it up. It's at the very least being accomplice to murder, right? Yeah. Like the reason I point this out is not because I want there to be punishments. I don't. I want you to have 100% rights. If you can get pregnant, you should have those rights. But like, they're 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 not saying what they really believe because they know how unpopular it is. Saying yes, we should execute people who have abortions is insane, and that's why they're not saying it. Not because it's an intellectually consistent position for them to think that these people are involved with murders, but we don't think they should suffer any consequences whatsoever. Like, and the reason that this matters is they just got they're getting what they want now. We can gamble that that's all they want and it'll go no further. That's a fun way to run a country or one can worry that, well, no, they're gonna outlaw it in half the states now. And then in a couple of years, they're gonna outlaw it federally. And then eventually they're gonna start jacking up the punishments because the insane right wingers that they're trying to fire up to vote based on this stuff. What are they just gonna like, Oh, I guess we, we don't have that issue anymore. No, they're gonna have to keep moving it another pace. Yes. And so they say it's murder. <laughs> Maybe we should take them at their word on that, that they really believe that. No, and and it is, you know, it is a perfect foil for them to target women and to blame them for, let's say, miscarriages. Because once you get into this territory of criminalizing anyone who terminates a pregnancy, and there is not a clear way to determine whether someone had a miscarriage or was having an abortion, tried to have an abortion, right? And so, and I just I see the headlines, right? You know, woman tries to kill own baby. Oh, she was doing this. She was doing this. She went across the border to Mexico. There's, it's like it's endless 
and it mm -hmm. will go down this slippery slope. So I think you're right, they're not trying to boast about it now, which by the way, if you criminalize a doctor or you criminalize a Uber driver, you criminalize anyone who assists in an abortion, that effectively does doom the person who is seeking a termination to to death as well because it yeah. per, it cuts them off from access um and and can put them in harm's way and will and has but then on top of that of course they're going to go after women cuz that's actually who they want to go after there's mm. so much easier to demonize women for being i don't know human yeah yeah i mean look they don't like doctors that's true but this is not fundamentally yeah. about controlling doctors this is yeah. about controlling Controlling the women, and by the way, they say that like the birth, there's no, there's no dividing line on the birth. It's all the same. So, so if a woman hired a guy to kill her weak old baby, yep, would they only punish the guy? Like again, I, I don't, I don't agree with them. <laughs> I'm simply saying, I don't think that they don't get all of what I'm pointing out. I think that they are being very careful politically. The fact that Trump and the Republicans are not like so excited and con like congratulating themselves right now. It is not about, oh, they're having second thoughts. It is just a political thing. That is all it is. <music> Kellyanne Conway has got a book coming out. I'm not gonna read it, you shouldn't read it. Do not pay any money for it. But there are a couple of tidbits dropping from it that in these sorts of situations I think are worth discussing and one is, the time when Trump apparently considered dropping out of the presidential race. Now, this isn't the 2020 race, this is back in 2016. And what happened is the Access Hollywood tape came out where Trump, in attempting to seem cool to Billy Bush or whatever, <laughs> uh, described how he likes to casually sexually assault women and how it's awesome because he's a celebrity or whatever. Now, apparently, Trump had seen reports following this that the GOP quote could force him off the ticket or hold a vote to expel him. And so he asked uh, Kellyanne Conway, should I get out of the race? Now, what's interesting is that in public, he was saying, there's zero chance I'll quit. I never, ever give up. But he was talking to her about, like, should I? Am I going to be forced out? Would it look better for me to quit than to let the Republicans force me off the ticket? And she apparently said, you actually can't quit unless you want to forfeit and throw the whole damn thing to Hillary. Trump then said, what do you mean I can't? It's it's awesome that she almost like reverse psychology to him into quitting the race. But anyway, she said that stepping out of the race at that point wasn't in the picture because early voting had already begun. And so what what's interesting too is that she wants to come out of this book coming out looking very reasonable about this. So I wanna describe the difference in what mm -hmm. she was saying publicly and privately about that tape. She describes a scene in which she says she reassured him he'd win while also ripping into him over the vulgar comments that he made on the tape. At the time, she was going on shows like Dana Bash's on CNN saying that people should quote, stop using the term sexual assault to label what she what Trump had said in the tapes. In her new book, she claims she called him out specifically to him saying the words were disgusting and reprehensible. And the, the cool thing about those two different things, public and private, is that one is on tape and the other is just a thing she's saying that she said years ago. And can't be proven, you can't prove that it didn't happen. Which are you gonna believe, Francesca? Oh God, I, I Kellyanne Conway is a conniving, um, cold hearted bitch. I'm just gonna be real, like she knows exactly what she's doing. She has no stars in her eyes about who Donald Trump is. Remember, she was also on the anti-Trump train for a while there back Ted Cruz yep. before Trump won the actual primary. So she knows exactly who he is. She knows who she was dealing with and she decided to sort of sell her soul and make her bed and there she is. And honestly, as if her soul was all that amazing working for Ted Cruz. <laughs> um, yeah. But I do think it's interesting like why would you say that Trump thought about quitting? Like I don't that that is just sounds like a That's true. Sounds like a sort of a gem of a tidbit there that she wanted to include and if it is true um like that's insane. And we almost we almost had him guys, but here's the difference is that nobody cared, especially <laughs> none of his voters. Nobody cared in that moment. And and remind you, this was before the Me Too movement. And I would argue that it's because Donald Trump, we elected a groper in chief 
We elected someone with however many sexual misconduct allegations against him. We elected that person that all the others had to fall. Tr- truly, I believe this. Like, mm-hmm. and that's what it was because I think women across this country, people across this country, saw the impunity with which rich, powerful men can do this kind of thing, and which with which they brag about it. So when that tape dropped, I thought to myself, man, this this would look bad for anyone else, yeah, other than someone like Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, you're 100 percent right. And in in the years since then, like. You know how far they they got a, they got a few guys only if like the there was overwhelming evidence of so okay. many women and it okay. exceeded a certain threshold then maybe they got a few maybe but I don't know the 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 claim about Elon Musk comes out and every single one of his followers immediately says that she's a liar she's trying to get famous or got like, like she's just trying to take him down because he votes Republican which is why she years before he said that. Had this like suit against him, <laughs> but no, it's just you don't trust anymore. And like, what what are like uh, we go years after that movement, and now what's going on on TV right now? Like a multi week like orgy around a burning at the stake of Amber Heard going on right now. Like the the backlash has been absolutely no, and, insane. And not only that, like Fox News, we covered this on the Bituation Room. Fox News is out in front defending Elon and straight up saying like, yeah. look, if this were a few years ago, I might have believed her. But now the Me Too movement is so passe. Oh my gosh, sexual, sexual assault doesn't happen anymore. And you're like, but no, it no, was no. a few years ago. It it, exactly. The incident happened in 2016. He paid for her silence. Exactly. Anyway, one of the reasons I wanted to briefly mention this. So Kellyanne Conway, of course, just wants to sell books or whatever. And so she has to come up with something that she was there for. She's gonna have a harder time selling the books because unlike someone like a Stephanie Grisham, she isn't willing to turn on the movement. So like she definitely saw stuff that is really bad for him. She could reveal those things and she might sell some books, but she still wants to be a part of the movement. So she can't do that. So this is what she's got. But it just it reminded me like I had to go back mentally to that time. This now is six years ago when that tape dropped. I still remember when it did. Um, and then like two hours later, uh, the WikiLeaks uh, drop started. It totally not uh, not a coincidence. Um, but anyway, um, just the fact that that didn't that did that didn't end it. I mean, we know that in the wake of that, he did a million things, any one of which should have ended his presidency or whatever. But that really should have ended it. And it is absurd that the race was, he still, he got less votes, admittedly, but the race was so much closer than it should have been. And that is, there's a lot that's happened in the past decade that would lead us to be very ashamed of our country. But this was one of the moments where it's not that the thing that happened was the worst. America's done far worse things, but this was the easiest for us to come out against. And we didn't. We couldn't agree even on this, that it was wrong for a guy to brag on tape about assaulting people. You know, we crossed the Rubicon at that moment. And I, again, I think about Republican women who are very much, again, like Trump admitted, aren't excited about Roe v. Wade being turned overturned. And I think about them and I think about like how much in that moment they were asked to shut up and cower. And they were asked to keep their mouths shut. They were asked to vote anyway. They were asked to never to to chalk it up to boys talk or whatever Melania yep. chalked it up to. And just how much crap that is to swallow. That like even if you like, I just I I just it boggles my mind. It does. It does. We've. We've learned a lot over the past few years, uh, not societally, just us. Anyway, with that said, we're gonna take our last break. When we come back, lots more to talk about, don't go anywhere. Okay, sort of fitting in with some of what we were talking about during that social break, let's jump into this. The Americans have a higher incidence of maternal mortality. Uh, so if you correct our population for race, um, we're not as much of an outlier as it would otherwise appear. Okay, so uh, that is uh, Senator Bill Cassidy, a Republican of Louisiana, just casually saying that, like, sure, Louisiana looks really bad when it comes to uh, maternal mortality, but if you only pay attention to the white folk, it doesn't look as bad. That sounds really bad. And he seems to get it because he kind of tries to nuance it, correct himself, saying, now I say that not to minimize the issue, but to focus the issue as to where it would be. For whatever reason, people of color have a higher incidence of maternal mortality. Um, 
here's what I'm gonna say. Even with that little added caveat, that doesn't make what you said better. And in particular, for whatever reason, would you like to look into that? Would you like to talk to, I don't know, those women or doctors or activists or academics? Like, if you've identified that one community has a far higher rate of the moms dying, that's not just like a, huh, I don't know, and then move on. Maybe that should be something that would like spur you to action. I mean, you are, after all, I'm not gonna swear, a United States Senator. Maybe you could save some of those lives. Maybe there could be some sort of bipartisan legislation or something like that, Francesca. You're talking about moms dying and you're supposed to be pro life. But once you correct for race, oh. i.e., once you just cut out black women and brown women from the equation and just put them over here in a we don't care about you bucket, then actually, like maternal mortality is pretty good. Yay, you see how I did that? You see how I just ignored, that's not racism. I just chose to ignore black women. It's insanely crass. And of course, it, it, it reminds me of the Mitch McConnell sort of mask off phrase of like, well, you know, uh, black people have the same voting rates as uh, ordinary, regular, normal Americans. Oh. It is, it's so clear who they care about living and who they care about dying. And the real thing with this that strikes me is that in Samuel Alito's insanely um, just like, like contempt filled decision that was leaked, he actually talks about maternal mortality among black and brown Americans, women, as like a reason why we should overturn Roe v. Wade because he says, oh, so many, so many women of those communities get abortion, so actually it's mm -hmm. eugenics. And you're like, you don't care. We know you don't care, cuz look at your other allies over here, like Bill Cassidy. You don't care right. about their lives. No, definitely not, uh, but we do. Let's give you the numbers so that you can know about it. So uh, each year, apparently averaged out in the US, 17 mothers die for every 100,000 pregnancies in the country, uh, with rates higher among uh, black women than other racial groups, is according to the CDC. So, you know, good luck getting the right to care about that, either because of who it's affecting or the fact that the data comes from the CDC. It's dead on arrival in both cases. You can see the United States compared to other countries on this chart of maternal mortality. Um, Mexico, get it together, geez. But anyway, <laughs> it's a couple of the countries there. The US comes right after Mexico, Chile, Hungary. And Turkey, New Zealand, not doing that well, actually, surprisingly. Republic of Korea, you would expect to, to be a little bit higher. But anyway, um, some of those countries, Poland, Iceland, Greece, Finland, Sweden, show that you can have uh, much better rates in terms of this metric. Um, by the way, that, that's for the US. Specifically in Louisiana, four black mothers die for every white mother, and two black babies die for every one white baby. Louisiana's maternal mortality rate exceeds the national average. It's 47th out of 48th, fifth highest infant mortality rate in the United States, Louisiana. Um, so obviously, massive problem there. It, like, it seems like something that maybe you should care about. Maybe you should do something about. It. Like, for whatever reason, like, shouldn't you have a spark of curiosity that would want to know how, like, four times the rate? That shouldn't just be a thing that Bill Cassidy should put a couple of weekends of research into. That's a thing that could should shut down a news cycle. We should focus as a nation on it. And you can, by the way, this is um this is yet another topic that John Oliver did a great segment on like a year or five years ago or whatever. He was way ahead of the curve talking about that. It's it's a, it's especially a problem amongst uh people of color. For women generally though, it is just well documented. The doctors don't listen to them and mm -hmm. don't believe them when they talk about things like pain, like the symptoms that they have. Uh, I've seen nothing in the past few years that indicates that's getting any better. Maybe that's something that we should get around as a society to dealing with. Yeah, my back hurts right now. Where's my massage? All right, I'm pregnant. Let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna milk this. No, it is. Look, it's really striking to see the countries that beat us in maternal mortality, like Hungary. You know who just held mm -hmm. their political convention? in Budapest yeah. this last weekend, CPAC, all right? You got Donald Trump speaking next to Viktor Orban and Tucker Carlson. It's like, this is the country they want to be. Oh, We want more women to die in childbirth or because of childbirth related causes. 
How can you say you are pro-life? You don't care what you, that is so clear. Because if you compare these rates to also the health of the baby, my guess is that there's a correlation there. Meaning the more maternal mortality, the more the baby is actually not not also doing all that great. That it that means that this is not about the mother's life. This is not about the baby's life. This is not about life. This is about strapping half the population with a burden that they do not want, with a choice that they don't get to make. It is about yeah. cornering them. It is about taking away their rights, and it is about dooming them. I know it is. It's sad to say this, and it's difficult to say this, but that pop like. One of the leading causes of poverty is actually having children because a lot of people are unable to decide when and how they continue or stop or start yeah. a family, right? Mm-hmm. And they they don't have the money to do that in, in a lot of cases. Again, six out of 10 women who have abortions already have kids. Agreed, agreed. Okay, uh, we're gonna jump into one last quick topic with what remains of this hour. Okay. Let's jump into this. <clears throat> For some time now, uh, we here at the Damage Report uh, were mocking Donald Trump for having no interest whatsoever in using his own social media network, uh, Truth Social or uh, Trump Central, uh, he says. Um, I would like to apologize for that because now he is using it and it turns out that's worse. Take a look at this tweet that MAGA King Fano sent out and take a look at who retruthed it. It just says civil war. Ugh. That is the former president of the United States seeing a truth civil war and thinking, I gotta spread that to all my, I don't know, what do they call the followers on this or truthers? I don't know, something. He he liked Marks. that message. Now, <laughs> Marks, exactly. That is exactly what they are. So where did this come from? Well, okay, so Laura Logan had retweeted the president of El Salvador. The president of El Salvador had tweeted, well, truthed, the most powerful country in the world is falling so fast that it makes you rethink what the real reasons are. Something so big and powerful can't be destroyed so quickly unless the enemy comes from within. Okay, so the president of El Salvador is saying without saying that there is an internal plot to take down the United States. Laura Logan, who was once considered to be a future dignified right wing news person, and is now just hanging out on Truth Social, she tweets it. MAGA King Thanos thinks that based on what the president of El Salvador said, we need a civil war. And Trump comes in and thinks, yep, we're on, let's let's do this thing. Can you imagine if Obama had retweeted a call for civil war following Donald Trump winning election? Can you imagine what Fox News would have said about that and would have been right to say about that? Sure. But this is just a thing that just happened on Truth Social. So who cares, Francesca? We're just moving on with our lives. Isn't Thanos a bad guy? I know, but they think it's the thing where Maga like- Maga King Thanos, okay, so we want to destroy the world. Oh, but like he's he's bad, but like now you're saying he's bad. So the ha ha's on you and we like the bad guy because you don't like that we like the bad guy. That's literally the train of thought that the right has used. Yeah, and and again, back to uh, countries who beat us in awfulness. El Salvador already criminalized women who have abortions or alleged abortions. A lot of them are in jail currently for 30 years for miscarriages. Again, more than their rapists get uh, time for in jail. I did reporting on that specifically. Other thing that El Salvador is doing, uh, banking their entire economy on Bitcoin. That's right, and they're buying the dip, meaning they're further digging themselves into the Bitcoin hole. El Salvador is a terrible example of a government that functions or works or that we should be emulating. And then here you go, talking Mm -hmm. about the United States like that. Let's retweet it and then yeah, civil war. Hey, baby, but why not? Yeah. By the way, if you like at this point are still like actively falling and hoping for Trump to to get back to become president, that is like literally buying the dip right there. <laughs> like he, he is dipped and you're dipping with him, man. Anyway, um, yeah, so by the way, the, the president of El Salvador has declared himself the world's coolest dictator. I don't, maybe he is, I don't know, is that good? I, like again, it's ah, I'm trolling, I'm saying the bad thing, but I'm saying it publicly, ah, I'm clever or whatever. They found a loophole. For being clever or interesting or non cringy. Yep. It doesn't make any sense to regular people, but they're big fans of it. So that's what's going on in Truth Social. Uh, don't use Truth Social. And with that said, 
If you've been listening on our podcast or one of the linear platforms, thank you so much for joining us today as in all days. Uh, for the rest of you on YouTube or on Twitch or on our other platforms, Francesca and I will be coming back to cover a lot more news. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few. Eric says, magnets, how do they work? Marjorie Green, exactly. <laughs> don't listen to her on literally anything, especially health stuff. Ugh. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.